the realization that merely tinkering with the existing system of language teacher education will not suffice to meet the challenges posed by accelerating economic, cultural and educational globalization and that what is surely and sorely needed is no less than a radical restructuring of language teacher education. Kumaravadi Velu's radical restructuring of language teacher education translates into language educators having to step further and further away from the comfort zones of familiar methods and approaches as they strive to meet the high expectations and complex demands being made on their competencies, en route to becoming dynamic, outward-facing, community-building, radically democratic, initiatory, active and interventionist 2.0 teachers. Telecollaboration is one practice which goes well beyond the concept of mere tinkering with language education and which has great potential for wider implementation than currently occurs as the practice enables 2.0 language teachers and their 2.0 students to step virtually outside the confines of their classroom and to interact with the globalised world that Kumaravadi Velo refers to. The practice goes by various aliases, depending on the discipline taught using it. Defined by Sadler and Dooley as a technology-enhanced learning configuration, whatever name this process is given, at the core beats a social constructivist heart, learning perceived not as a solitary process, but as a result of interaction with others. We frame telecollaborative learning as an embedded, dialogic process that supports geographically distanced collaborative work through social interaction involving a synchronous, synchronous communication technology so that participants co-produce mutual objectives and share knowledge building. Student teachers and all teaching hands alike on the front line of telecollaborative projects are likely to find such a definition somewhat daunting. Not only is the telecollaborative learning process complex and multi-layered, but its efficacy depends primarily on teacher partners succeeding in a form of virtual team teaching which demands high levels of communication and cooperation with a partner whom they may not have met face to face. For teachers organising telecollaboration projects, addressing the complexity of an activity which refers to many different types of online contact involving various educational contexts, types of partners, online tools and pedagogical approaches, and the wide range of interconnected factors distributed onto individual, classroom, social, institutional and interactional levels by Udaud and Ritter indicated as possible contributions to failed communication, the challenges are indeed daunting. However, if we accept that language education requires radical interventions beyond mere tinkering, then as forward-thinking educators, we cannot shy away from the challenge. In this presentation, we will take a look at key competencies that language teachers who are willing to take up the challenge and organise telecollaboration projects need to possess as individual educators and as part of the vital teacher partnership, the bedrock of a successful telecollaboration project. We will then briefly examine some of the main components which make up telecollaborative projects and on which the teacher organisers will have to focus their attention and skills before finally taking a look at the development and outcomes of significant projects aimed at the training of teachers for telecollaboration. If it is true that the outcome of a telecollaboration project, whether it flourishes or flounders, 
is dependent on the teacher partnership, then it is also true that the success of the partnership will depend, in part, on the competencies of the individual teachers. In addition to the key areas of competency suggested by Guth and Helm in 2010 of linguistic pedagogy, digital literacy and Byram's intercultural communicative competencies, O'Dowd in 2013 suggested the categories of attitudes and beliefs connected to the capacity for openness and flexibility of educators and of organisational competencies. Within these main areas of competence, teacher partners are required to address the multiple elements which compose a fully functional telecollaboration project, ranging from hard and software issues to institutional differences such as clashes in academic calendars, in contact hours or class sizes, to the double challenge of task design, that is to say, not only creating telecollaborative tasks which suit different curricula, but which also ensure that effective and useful learner exchanges take place and that they do so in accordance with the social constructivist goals of telecollaboration. The method of student partner matching will also have to be devised and implemented whilst paying attention to matching the modality and frequency of teacher partner communication and to the compatibility of teaching styles in particular regarding attitudes towards learner-centred approaches. Realistically, for a project to work, the style of the project cannot be at variance with the teaching styles of either of the teacher partners. Variations in commitment levels and of perceptions of collaborators not pulling their weight are potentially very damaging to the outcome of the project. The role the teachers will take in the learners' interactions, that is to say, the degree to which the educators allow the project to be social constructivist in nature, also has to be a mutually held vision, as do the vitally important assessment strategies. Finally, teacher partners should have the foresight to collaborate in the setting up of strategies to deal with possible issues student partners may well encounter. This list is far from definitive, however, it gives a sense of the wide range of areas that telecollaborating teacher partners should possess competencies in. Although telecollaboration has been around in one form or another for almost 30 years, the development of it has suffered until relatively recently from practitioners and researchers in different disciplinary fields being relatively unaware of the existence of one another and of one another's research findings. This lack of communication and collaboration and the consequent absence of the sharing of approaches, strategies and solutions to key issues has meant that for many years telecollaboration has been in the hands of passionate individual educators who have had to go it alone and face the multiple challenges, expectations and complexities of organising such projects without any clear expert guidance. Happily, over the last few years we have finally seen an increase in attempts to provide guidelines to educators embarking on telecollaboration projects. For example, two studies in training teachers to telecollaborate carried out by Vinegra in 2016 and 2017, or Sadler and Dooley's retrospective, also in 2016, of 12 years of telecollaborative teacher training, culminating in the last few years in important initiatives such as Evaluate, Unicollaboration and eTwinning.
The suggestion of including telecollaboration in teacher training was made back in 2004 by O'Dowd and Eberbach, who proposed that trainee teachers be instructed in methods of finding telecollaborative partners, setting up projects, and in techniques such as ethnographic interviewing, as well as in communication strategies in order to facilitate partner relationships. In a 2016 article, offering an overview of the evolution of the 12 years of a telecollaborative project aimed at trainee teachers, Sadler and Dooley, following Kumara Vadivelu's post-transmission perspective on second and foreign language teacher education, with the ultimate goal of producing self-directing and self-determining individuals, applied the CARDS model as a criteria to evaluate the levels of attainment of knowledge of the trainees as well as of the programme itself. The researchers noted that in the earlier iterations of the project there is evidence of very limited development in both professional and procedural knowledge. However, in the course of the years, during which time telecollaboration became the core of the learning process and not merely a peripheral activity, greater clarity regarding what was expected of the student teachers, together with intense preparatory work and hands-on engagement with the materials, by the twelfth year of the project translates into copious displays of knowing, analysing, recognising, doing and seeing. Dooley is also involved in the Evaluate project, an Erasmus Plus programme of the European Union, together with O'Dowd, Muller Hartmann and other prominent figures in the field of telecollaboration, such as Gath and Helm. This project has generated a guide entitled A Training Manual on Telecollaboration for Teacher Trainers for use in the training of student teachers. In view of the fact that teacher partners are directly and indirectly modelling interaction and collaboration for their students, the Evaluate Project Manual issues a general recommendation that they bring to the exchange table a fair share of goodwill, a readiness to adapt and compromise, and openness to difference. More specifically, the manual indicates several common denominators present in successful telecollaborative projects and which include two key elements relevant to partnerships, first and foremost that of the teachers themselves. Telecollaborative projects should have a minimum duration of six to eight weeks to allow time enough for the establishment of a partnership. Collaboration must go beyond the mere exchange of information. The suggestion is thus that priority needs to be given to the social interaction aspect as a vital first step in creating a solid teacher partnership prior to the start of a telecollaborative project in a phase of information exchange through reciprocal interviews about their own personal, institutional and cultural contexts. The Evaluate project supplies a template for these interviews and which includes a variety of questions. The Evaluate project researchers also identified two further key steps based on the progressive exchange model to include in the preliminary phase of the Teacher Partnership Foundation. Comparing and analysing cultural practices, working on a collaborative project. In these two phases, teacher partners carry out comparisons of critical analyses of cultural products from both cultures. For example, books, surveys, films, newspaper articles, and find similarities and differences. Insight derived from this first process is put into practice when the teacher partners then collaborate in the creation of an artefact, such as a project suitable for both school contexts.
Vinagra, in her 2016 study, Training Teachers for Virtual Collaboration, also places emphasis on quality interaction as the basis for sound and friendly relationships that will also facilitate active participation and negotiation of meaning between partners. She states that relative to the study she conducted, successful collaboration occurred when teacher partners favoured social interaction over task completion and included the following features as relevant to successful telecollaborative partnerships. Consistent participation, prompt communication, regular group discussion, timely and relevant contributions, commitment to the task. The researchers stated that it was intention in future projects to actively scaffold the social interaction phase as a means of ensuring the teacher partners get off to the best possible start. Indeed, active scaffolding of the social interaction phase of telecollaboration teacher partners can even culminate in the drawing up and signing of contract, assessment strategies, syllabus, annual academic calendar can be included in the document alongside descriptors of expected behaviour and attitudes of the partners. Furthermore, the researchers Sadler and Dooley, who also favour the inclusion of a partner contract, suggest that it be the basis for self and peer assessment throughout the project. Telecollaboration, complex and multifaceted as it is, offers complex and multifaceted learning opportunities to today's foreign language learners. However, in order for telecollaboration projects to succeed, the all-important teacher partnership must be the model of collaboration and intercultural dialogue which the learner partners aspire to, and for that to occur, teachers require specific training in telecollaboration. The experiential modelling approach by which teachers learn to organise telecollaboration projects by taking part in telecollaboration projects is the method used by the researchers behind the Evaluate project and who, between 2017 and 18, worked with over 1,000 student teachers. In the conclusive report, published in March 2019, the Evaluate Project authors surmise that institutions of initial teacher education and educational authorities at regional, national and European levels must actively support the training of teachers in telecollaboration in three key ways. By making funds available for online and offline teacher training and for physical mobility in order to allow teachers to meet their partners and lay down the foundations for an effective telecollaborative teacher partnership. By ensuring that teachers are given the time and technology they require to train and to organise telecollaboration projects. By officialising acknowledgement of the increased workload and multiple challenges teachers face when involved in training for setting up telecollaborative projects.